look, uh, we've got a, a track star, but hey, man, maybe we could have had a football star. Hey, but, I had uh, a plan, bro. Uh, you had like, a plan. I had a plan. Yeah? How, I who, had did a you, who did you want to play for? Who did you dream of playing so for? So the whole plan was to go from, you know, club soccer and then go to Chiefs. Because I'm a big Chiefs supporter. Go from Kaiser Chiefs and then... It's okay. Do you want a hug? Ish. It's, 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 it's okay, a sense no, of the topic. No, you know, I, I take back my hand. <laughs> <laughs> And then we went from, uh, say I said I was going to go from Chiefs and then play so well, you know, play for Bafana and then they'll, be ta they'll take me to Chelsea and I'll get signed with Chelsea and then that will be the ultimate dream. I'm living my life playing Champions League and everything. That was my plan, literally. But, hey man, life just did its own, took its own way with me. Ah, special days, special days. You know, when I've got some of the fastest uh, uh, people in the world, uh, I always get excited, I always get happy. And I've got uh, Akane Simbine alongside me, uh, the brother with a lovely smile, the man who apparently loves listening to Beyonce and everything. <laughs> I don't listen to Beyonce, my wife listens to Beyonce, bro, not me. I'm joking, man. Uh, Akane, uh, awesome to be alongside you, man. Um, I mean, you've done some amazing things uh, in the past few years. Uh, do you sometimes pinch yourself? No, man. But firstly, thank you. Um, but I don't really pinch myself. I think I take every year as it comes. You know, I'm not a person that kind of holds on to the past or things that I've done. I'm more of a person that kind of lives in the moment and get to the next moment, you know. And I know what I've done is really, really cool and really awesome and stuff. But like for me, it's about being in the moment and living in the moment as best as I can because in that moment that's where I am my true self and I'm enjoying myself and I'm in in it I mean you, you mentioned moments right uh, everyone has a start mm. right uh, even if you're not taking in necessarily the moments now everyone has a start where so you think yeah that's where I truly fell in love with with what I'm doing now so I want to know and I'm sure a lot of people want to know uh, where did this thing start so you, were you just beating people on the streets or you know was it a school thing Hey man, I've always been the first kid, literally. <laughs> the since. problem one. No, I wasn't the problem one. No, I, I mean like you know that thing when you're like, ah, uh, no, no, let's go, let's race. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I always back myself, yeah. you know. And I, I never actually athletics was not a plan. This was not a dream for me. Um, I was wanting to be a soccer player. I just wanted to play soccer. I was doing well at soccer, and you know that was my dream. And I was always the kid where the team used to plan around me. They were like, okay, we're going to kick the ball over it, and you just run and go and go score. And um, in high school, the principal found out that I was fast. And then he would kind of like said to me, like, if you want to play soccer for this team, you got to run for the team. I was like, hey, man, it is what it is. Fine, I'll yeah. just run, you know. Beat the matrix, beat the grade 11s. And then it was a thing of, like, oh, crazy. This is the first kid in the school now, you know. And... Then my principal was like, oh, you're actually really good. What will take this thing really seriously? And I was like, no, man, no, I don't want to play soccer. Leave me alone. Why don't? Got to matric. And at that point, I was, had a coach. They, they got me a coach. And then I was playing club soccer and school soccer and school athletics. And my mom was like, hey, bro, it's like, it's matric. You know, you know matric you was like, yeah, yeah. you got to cut it down. You just got to do books. And I was like, no, man, I have to do something at least. And then she said, um, just choose one. Of just a whim, I was like, let go of my soccer dream to, to athletics. Really? Literally, just decided to just quit soccer. And but, it just... I mean, if, if, if your dream the whole time was to, was to, was to play football... Yeah. It's, it's, it's not an easy thing to, to just pick. So how, how, did, how did your mind shift? It was just from that conversation. In that conversation, my parents just said to me, like, with football, you, it's about a team, it's about other people, you know, your result depends on other people, your improvement depends on other people. If the coach favours you, cool, you'll get to play. If the coach doesn't favour you, you won't get to play. Now your talent won't be exposed. With track, if you win, no one can take that away from you. You, if number one, you're number one, you know. And then I was like, oh, okay, cool, let me just run, you know. I just wanted to just be active at that point. And it, I didn't know that in that year, I would get chosen for an SA team to go to Zambia. And when I went to Zambia, it was in December, after my finals, I, 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 I ran and I won the championship. And then I broke the SA junior record. And in that, when breaking the SA junior record, then things just started happening. Like, I got a manager. My manager told me, yo, you know, you could actually make an actual career out of this. You could go to the Olympic Games. You could travel the world. 
you could like make good serious money with this thing i was like okay but i was sold at the fact that i could travel the world because i've never been out of the country i've never gone to like europe or america all these things and now they're saying you can do this thing and it'll be covered sign me up you know and then the rest is history man like signed and I started traveling started running improving I'm a big football guy I mm-hmm. love the game so I want to know and I'm sure uh, lots of people, what position did you play right wing right wing right wing and then when I, I started getting take care serious of then, then, <laughs> that was the whole thing and then when I started getting serious about it I went to right wing back because they wanted me to overlap and stuff but that was my position right wing I was clutch there, trust. Clutch. <laughs> Look, uh, we've got a, a track star, but hey, man, maybe we could have had a football star. Hey, but, I had uh, a plan, bro. Uh, you had a like, plan. I had a plan. Yeah. How, I who, had did a you, who did you want to play for? Who did you dream of playing so for? So the whole plan was to go from, you know, club soccer and then go to Chiefs. Because I'm a big Chiefs supporter. Go from Kaiser Chiefs and then... It's okay. Do you want a hug? Ish. It's, 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 it's okay, a sense no, of the topic. No, you know, I, I take back my hand. <laughs> <laughs> And then we went from, uh, say I said I was going to go from Chiefs and then play so well, you know, play for Bafana and then they'll, be ta- they'll take me to Chelsea and I'll get signed with Chelsea and then that will be the ultimate dream. I'm living my life playing Champions League and everything. That was my plan, literally. But, hey man, life just did its own, took its own way with me. So. Nah, nothing wrong, nothing wrong. Yeah. And I'm interested, you know, quite early in our lives, our, our families are always such a, a big part of, of our decision making, a big part of the, the choices we make. Mm. Um, how big was yours? You mean, you've already mentioned uh, your parents kind of guiding you. Mm-hmm. Um, take me through that. And, and I think my parents have been a big, a big impact in my career, being a part of who I am as a person. And like, if it wasn't for them giving me that chat and that talk about, you know, football and athletics and having control of the kind of your destiny with the one, I don't think I would have been here. You know. Um, Yes, my principal was saying to me, yeah, you should run, you're really talented and stuff. But I listened to my parents. You know? I, my parents' word is God. Like, whatever they say, I do. You know, and for them, they've guided me into, you know, my track life. But the whole thing before my parents was that I get an education. You know, it was always a thing of, okay, cool, you can run and everything, but go study. And when I was running and, I, you know, this thing started becoming serious, um, my mom was still on this thing of get a degree, you're getting a degree, you have to get your degree. This running thing is, she saw it yeah, as a... Lady, you got hey, Joe. <laughs> she saw this running thing as an extra mural, like, you know, school, like you're yeah. just playing for after school. And this thing is actually, she says, I'm earning money. She's like, I don't care about the money that I'm earning on track. <laughs> I love it. She's just like, yo, bro, get your degree. And then when you get your degree, I'll let you go. I got my degree. I literally took my degree and I gave it to her. Same day, I'm like, here, here's your degree. I'm gone <laughs> Look, moms don't compromise. They like, look, it comes from a good place. They yeah, just want the yeah, best for us, sure. You know? I think I'm going to be like that as well, man. I think, because I think one thing that I've learned, not, you know, with school, you know, you learn the school, whatever subject you're learning, but education teaches you so many different things, you know, and it's not just the maths or IT that you're studying or whatever. It's skills that you're going to be able to take into life and that's what i have taken into my life you know yes i have my degree and everything but i have skills that i've learned from doing my assignments from being with people from being going to my lectures having responsibilities those are the things that i've taken from you know getting a degree and focusing on making sure that i do have an education fundani fundani pasop yeah bro <laughs> but is your family a sporting one? I mean, because surely you get the speed from someone. Mm. Do you know where that comes from? They say my mom used to be very fast when she was younger. I've never seen her run. Till this day, I've never <laughs> seen my mom run. Never. You know, but they say she used to be fast. So I guess that's from her. But then, Angas, <laughs> Angas, I'm just here living. My stuff is recorded. They can see. Hey, my kids will be like, hey, if they are fast, they'll be like, my dad was fast also. So we know where it comes from. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, I tell you, I, I, would, I would pay good money to see a race between Akani and the Ole Eating Jerry. 1v1. One one. Yeah. I'll dust her. <laughs> <laughs> Ole the challenge is there. I'll dust her. Easy. But, I mean, you spoke about the, Af- the, 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 the South African junior record. Um, was that the moment where you were like, actually, I'm cooking there? Yeah, I can cook something nice. 
or no. or before then did you, did not you think? even like yeah. that was just like a, oh okay cool we can actually do this thing you know with, i can run fast but i got chosen to go to moscow for my first world championship senior championships in 2013 and when i went there and i saw usain bolt i met johan blake i saw justin gatlin got knocked out in the first round you know i ran with justin gatlin that guy was like amazing to see, actually be in a race with them you know that's when I saw, I was like, eh, okay, this thing is actually serious. These people take this thing very seriously. Like, it's not like an extra mural thing that I have in my head. And then you start, get, you get a deal. Got my first deal and I'm like, if I sign this thing, like I have, I have things that I need to do for, that, that in, in my contract, you know? And that's when I started becoming serious. And I was like, okay, like, this is actually serious. Like, I'm actually getting paid to run, so I need to trade. You know, in sports, we know about, mindset and mentality mm. right and in that moment do you do you sit there when you guys are i don't know how you guys line up or you start preparing and you look around and you're like hey man hey, this is happening yeah uh and and can that be something that's detrimental if mentally you don't know how to approach such things yeah like for me because i came into the sport not knowing much about the sport you know and when i came into the sport i was literally thrown into the deep end i was thrown with the seniors i was thrown with the Gatlins, the, the Johan Blakes, the Boats, you know. And I remember my first Diamond League. I, I raced with, it was the return of Tyson Gay, Asafa Powell, and Justin Gatlin. And they put me in the middle of them. And I was just in awe because these are greats, like athletic greats that everybody like saying, these people are just too cool. They, yeah. They're too fast, <laughs> yeah. you know. So I was just like, hey, hey. Let me just watch them race. From the time I left the hotel, I was in the car with Tyson Gay. And I was just looking at how he looks and everything. And it's like, what he does, he's like so focused. And this guy was just quiet, just chilling, you know? And me, I'm just looking at him like this, like, oh, let's get this guy. Get to the race, I'm watching them warm up. I'm not even focused on myself, you know? We run, the gun goes off, run, they just shift, go. I'm watching them, just seeing the backs. When I cross that line, I remember I said to myself that I can't let myself see these guys better than see these guys like they're better than me. Because if I'm going to compete against them and I'm going to stand on the line against them, I need to believe that I can be the best and I can believe I can beat these guys. No matter who's standing on the line with me, I need to believe that you know this is my domain. This is how I need to come into the race. And from that day, my mind shifted. Like I became a more competitive athlete. I came into the graces mentally ready to run, you know, mentally ready to like beat whoever's there, you know, even if they put Usain Bolt there, doesn't, I don't care, you know. And that's when my competitive edge and track just started becoming better and I started understanding that, hey man, you have to mentally believe that you are the best and this is your thing and this is your time. And, and can that be a mental hurdle, especially for youngsters? Mm. You know, when you're coming in, you know, I don't want to call it an inferiority complex, but almost like you take, 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 a, t take a bit of time to get to grips with the fact that you're here. Yeah. You're on this stage. These are my peers now. These are, not, these are people I'm comp competing against. Yeah, like it does take it. Like it's, it's hard because as much as you can believe it, right, you're going to get beat. You need to learn how to lose. You're going to get beat time after time, but still have to have that mentality of... I'm going to win, I'm going to win. Come back next race, I'm going to win. Come back next race, I'm going to win. Because if you don't, then you'll get lost in the circuit. You'll get lost in the game. You'll never have the consistency or the resilience or the lifespan in the, in the track world, you know. And as the younger guys come into the game, you just have to have a strong head. Because you need to believe that you're going to win. But if you don't win, still believe that you're going to win. Because, hey man, like... You're gonna you're gonna run against like people that have been in the game. People are faster than you, you know. And those are people that are also gonna try mess you up in the head, you know. Play like mental games with you in the core room, stare you down, you know. Talk nonsense to you, you know. And if you don't have a head for that, they've already beaten you before you even race. I've watched a lot of track and field, and and, and I never see a lot of that. Uh, but you're mentioning it now, so I, I want to know. Take me, take me into that, you know, because obviously see it in other sports and cricket. There's always a, that sort of 
Um, mm. They're sledging on the fields, and you know, when you look at football, the guys get in each other's faces. But in track and field, especially in running, you always see guys kind of zoned in into their own thing. But now you're taking me to a different world. So maybe just give us a little so sneak peek. Where it happens is like in the warm up area, mm. like where we warm up, get ready. If you know the other guys are really like, actually, for well, before warm up area, when you're at the hotel, having lunch. You know, it can happen, it can even start there where guys just looking at you while you're eating, someone doesn't greet you, walks past you and it's like, bro, we're not racing now, like, just chill, dog, like, it's not that deep. Get to the, co- the warm-up area, guys are, like, staring you down, trying to catch your eyes, um, guys are to say to you, hey, man, I'm going to beat you today, hey, man, just ready to get, get blown out, you know, it's like stuff like that, but it comes from a lot from the Americans, you know, it's, a, it's an American culture to do that, and... They call if, it tr- trash talking. Yeah, they <laughs> trash talk, you know, and they also come with like their own antics of being loud and all the stuff, you know. And if you don't have that mentality to kind of, kind of accept it and be like, ah, dude, it's, it is what it is. Do you make a noise? It's fine. I know what I need to do. You know, that's what that's how I come into it. You're gonna get blown out, bro. Like it's 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 a tough, it's a tough game to be in, but you need to be very strong mentally because once you get into the core room, now you're sitting like this with the person that you're going to race with. They're getting ready here, you're getting ready here. Then they're kind of in their zone, but they can just look at you and say, you're ready to run. What are you going to say? You've got to say, yeah, bro, I'm ready to run. Yeah. And I'm, like, I'm going to win. You know? And if he says, yeah, I'm going to win, back, bro, we'll see, but just know that I'm ready. You know, that's like the, the talking that you get. Then once I say, oh, guys, you're going to get onto, go onto the track now, then everybody just gets into their zone. They, doubt, they do what they need to do. That's when you're like, kind of focused and stuff. But the trash talking is there. The intimidation is there. And if you're not ready for it, uh, they're going to finish you. Oh, man, I love that. I love that. I, I, I want to try and sneak into one of those areas. I just want to watch you guys operating, <laughs> staying each other down. <laughs> but I mean, you, you, you mentioned those mental battles. Um, I know you've had uh, a few issues with injuries. Mm-hmm. Um, that's another side to the sport that not everyone always understands mm. you know how tough that can be in terms of can i come back can i be as fast uh, can i recover properly from this injury mm. um take me through some of those challenges and and how tough they were for you so my injuries 2015 2016 i kept getting recurring hamstring injuries you know and 2016 was a year of olympics I got um, a hamstring injury at SA Champs, and that was in April, and Olympics is in July. So now that kind of cuts out my time to actually prepare, you know, and it takes us like close to eight months to prepare for like one race. And in that time, we kind of like said, okay, you're injured now, but then just figure yourself out. You know, how do you go to physio, go to the doctor, go to the Cairo, get your massage, do pool sessions so the body's still moving and stuff. But it's all about what we figured out what it's all about like i need to make sure that i'm fixing and working on the little muscles and the weaknesses in my body and once we found that i haven't been getting injured and also like i've got a really good group i've got a really good team around me you know i like invested in the team i have my own physio i have my own doctor i have my own chiro my own dietitian um uh, my therapist and um my psychologist you know and those are people that are there to look after my body. They are there to look after my mind so that I don't get injured, you know? And if something happens, then the team already knows the protocols of what they need to do to make sure to get me back as quick as possible. But then it's literally all about putting that together. Like you put your team together and then make they know who you are and know how your body is. So now I haven't been getting injured. Like if I get an injury, it's like a little, it's it's a little niggle that will go away in like two three days and i can get back to training and then start again and build up again and it's gotten to that point where we are strong as a team like that i think a a lot of people underestimate the value Mm. of having a strong team it's Mm. kind of a nice catchphrase to use oh i got my team but having the right people around you like you're saying can be the difference between being extremely successful um, or someone who just breaks down and kind of just goes off the boil. Yeah, facts. Like, I think for us, it's like, athletics, is an, they see it as an individual sport. You know, you see me run, but you don't see the team behind me. I just listed to you six people. They're still my manager and my coach. Those are eight people that, like, 
work to make me run fast you know and there's so much value in my team and so much understanding in my team and it's it's, it's come over time you know like I, they've had to they've had to get to know me they get to know how my body is get to know how I respond to different training sessions get to know that if this is, is this really a niggle or it's just muscle tightness you know and those are the things where the team is very important not me you know I'm just the output of the team you know and I do what the team says I need to do and then when I go race yeah it's me I run you know but to build me up to that race the team is is what I, I look to. I want to mention one name, and then you can go out. Yes. Ragnar Prinsloo. Hey man, that's, that's, my, that's my G, though. That's, 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 that's the OG, man. Like, he's the guy that I've, he was my first coach. I'm still with him, how many years later? 13 years later, you know, I've stuck with him. We figured this professional life out together. He didn't know anything about pro athlete. I didn't know anything about a pro athlete. Figured the game out. And I have so much respect for him, you know, for so much patience. He has so much patience for me as an athlete. He's like worked himself to actually know how I respond and who I am. He's like, I always say like, it's my longest relationship I've ever had, <laughs> you know, but um, I have the uh, greatest amount of respect for him, man. And, and, and the fact that he's, he's, he's kind of like, he made his life me, you know, and he made his life me so that I can achieve, you know, and I'm very grateful for, to him. And like, I just hope that, you know, there'll be other athletes that go to him that he can develop and he can make better and, you know, make better sprinters, better runners, whatever activity they, they, they do. I mean, it's, it's never easy to, to find good people, good intentions. And like you're saying, you're in it from the long haul. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm sure a lot of people look at you in that professional space and think, man, what kind of relationship is that? You know, it almost reminds me of uh, uh, Jerry Maguire. Have <laughs> you ever watched that movie? Yeah, yeah, uh, you yeah. You know, yeah, he's yeah, like yeah. Rod Tidwell. He's yeah, like, it's my guy, show me the money. <laughs> yeah, bro, like, like we've worked together. Like, we committed to the plan. We committed to the goal, you know, and the goal was get faster, you know, go to the Olympic Games, go to the World Championships, try get a medal, try be successful, try be the fastest man in the world. That was the goal in the beginning when we saw that this thing is actually getting really serious. And for us, it's always been a thing of, what do we need to improve on? Where are we lacking? What was not, what didn't go right this past season? Let's work on that. What didn't go right here? Let's work on that. And that's how we've literally built this career. You know, it's literally learning the circuit, learning my body and learning where my strengths are in athletics because he didn't have much time because I just straight got into and became a senior and I became a world-class athlete and in that time we had to learn so many things about the circuit learn so many things about sprinting as a pro and all these things and those are different factors that not everybody looks at. The journey has been beautiful but you know we can't speak about Akane Simbini without speaking about the Olympic Games mm -hmm. um, you know the you know, being so close and, and not quite getting over the line in certain moments. Mm -hmm. And then I saw when you had that silver medal around your neck, just how much that meant to you. I can see you smiling now already. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, take me through that Olympic journey, you know, from the close calls to eventually getting I on think that podium. One thing that is with me is the consistency that I've had in the game. You know, I have ran under 10 seconds for 10 years consistently. I have been in every single World Champs or Olympic final since 2016, except last year where I got disqualified in the semi-final. I have been in every World, no, Olympic final since 2016, it's three Olympics. And only two people have done that, me and Usain, and placing top five. And for me, going into, I think the medal story comes from 2021, you know, um, where I kind of lost myself in 2021. You know, I lost who I was as an individual and as a person. I just became the runner. I became Agani the runner. And not Agani, just Agani, you know, myself as an identity. My identity was gone. And I 
was gearing myself up to going to the Tokyo Olympics and winning gold medal. Everything was, uh, was going that way. I trained, I, my races were going well. I was running races. I just ran a PB two weeks before Olympics. So we knew that my body was ticking, you know, and I had the fastest time going into the Olympics. Get to the Olympic Games, we go through the rounds, easy, get to the final, shock of my life, boom, come forth. I am just gutted, I'm devastated, I don't want to do this thing anymore, I, like, I'm, I, I just want to quit, you know, and um, at that point, leaving the Olympic Games, coming back home, I close myself up because I'm, like, I'm not happy with myself, you know, I'm happy with the results. I then, that leads me to depression, leads me to not wanting to be an athlete anymore, not wanting to be around anymore, you know, and um, my parents just saw that and just started seeing red flags and then they pushed me to go see a therapist, start talking to somebody and we started working on who Agani is, you know, because I had lost myself in track, I had lost myself in the goal of wanting to be the fastest man in the world and that took away so much of who I am as a person and who I was before the athletics happened, before, before the game even started with me, you know, and that was a very sad moment for me to realize, but a very powerful moment because at that point, I learned that I needed to fall in love with myself again and relearn myself and get myself into a position where I am comfortable with who I am as a person and I see beauty in myself and then I could start filling in and pouring into my athletics and once I started doing that I started enjoying track again I started my passion for track came back and we got to you know there was world championships be in between those where I was enjoying running and everything and then we got to the games this year and this year I literally just said to myself just enjoy it bro like I'm not gonna go into the games with like te being tense and, and, and trying to just prove something. I'm just gonna go out there and enjoy it. I'm, I'm gonna train, obviously. I'm gonna race, obviously. I'm gonna do everything I can as an athlete, but at the same time, I'm not gonna let myself lose myself again. Whatever result comes out, I must just be grateful for it, you know? And season went well, raced, won my races, had a good year, I had a good season this year. Got to the games, we ran. And then got to the final, finished fourth, fourth again, you know. I'm sure you hate the number four. <laughs> no, actually, I used to, but now it's actually changed. I have so much gratitude for number four because the number four got me to fall in love with myself, got me to realize who Akane is and who I am as a person, you know, and not to take for granted our inner self, you know. There's so much that the world wants from us, you know, and being fourth so many times at the championships and at the games, it's taught me that, you know, and I, I, I was telling someone that, like, my medal actually is myself. That's what I've gained from this, from coming fourth. But yeah, then, you know, we raced, I came fourth, but I was happy. Like, I was like, oh man, I got fourth, I just missed out on the medal, but I know I just missed out on a medal by like this much, literally, like it was centimeters, you know, and, for me, I ran my best race at the Olympic final. I ran a national record at the Olympic final, personal best at the Olympic final. I can't for, ask for anything more, you know? And I just learned how to take positives from that. And taking those positives for me kind of empowered me and made me stay in good spirits for the relay. Got to the relay, told the guys, yo guys, I'm good to go, you know? Let's do this thing. I know we can actually get a medal. We can actually do this thing if we just, Hand over the baton right, we can get a medal. Just make sure you get it to me in a position where I can run the guys down and I can get to the line first. And that's it, man. Man, you know, you've, you've said so much that even just me as, a, as, a, as, a, as an everyday South African, you know, as a guy, you know, we know how the world has been dealing with so much, so many issues around mental health. Mm. Um, and you touching on the fact that, you know, you went through that dark period, you lost yourself. I think people don't understand how common that is, especially when you're successful, when you're at the top, you know. Um, people all, only want to really focus on 
when you do great things but mm. when you when it's tough it can be really tough yeah bro like it's the the, the good things and the good like the goals achieved and you know the successes those are great you know but there's moments in the greatness where it's not happy you are lonely i travel five to six months of the year where i'm away from my family i'm alone you become lonely you get lonely and you want to just be with your family and it's 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 a thing that people don't see you know people just see the success they just see you know the the life and the lifestyle think oh he's traveling he's going to country to country he's doing all these great things you know he must be happy he has nothing to complain about you know but at the same time it's like you don't know our struggles you know you don't know like how hard life is or how hard life can be you know and I, I, I don't, don't look down on anyone's, other, anyone's troubles. I just know that it's being part of, it's being human, man. We all gonna struggle, we all gonna have tough times, but it's just how you attack those tough times, how you attend to them and how you make sure that you come out of it stronger, how you come out of it better. I always say that it's not about the end goal, you know, it's always about the journey that makes it for me. The journey is always the most important part. And with the journey, you learn so much of you. You learn so much of how you can be great. Man, I love that. I love that. And, and no doubt there will be some youngster watching us today, having this conversation. And uh, for me, if you were to speak to a young Akani and a young South African, you know, uh, about success, about tough times, about... Mm -hmm. You know, really building yourself up to be a person that you can love yourself. Mm. Uh, you know, what 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 could you possibly share with them? Man, life is gonna be tough, no matter what you do. Man, there are billionaires that are out there that are having tough times. There are successful people that are having tough times. But just wake up every day and just get to it. Do something. You know, wake up every day and 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 be put yourself in a position to move forward. I always tell my friends that, guys, like, the world moves forward. The world keeps ticking. Time keeps ticking. You can't just sit and not do anything because that's taking so much away from you as a human, you as a soul. And if you are just going to sit and just accept that, oh, I'm just going to be here in this position and just sit and not do anything about it, you're wasting yourself. You're wasting your time. And I think from myself to my younger self, bro, just keep on pushing, you know, like, Life will give, you know, life will give, but it will also take, you know, it's, 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 it's an up and down trajectory. It's going to go up, it's going to go down, it's going to go up, it's going to go down. And you can't just be flatlined. Flatlined means you're dead, you know, and life is up and down. So just keep it going. Yeah, man, that's truly special. And I can't finish a conversation around athletics specifically without asking you about someone you spoke about quite often uh, in our conversation, the great man mm -hmm. uh, from Jamaica. You say Bolt. I mean, one of my favorite athletes of all time. Uh, I don't know how big an inspiration he was for you, um, but take me through meeting him. And, and, and I mean, you're talking about literally the fastest man to ever walk this planet. Factual. I think Usain has been a really great individual for the sport but not just for athletics, but for sport in, in totality, you know. Um, you saying, I got to meet him and I got to be in a personal space with him, you know, and just being able to just see such a great person be so humble, talk to you, you know, say, no, Doug, I really believe that you can actually do this thing, you know, and I really know that you, you might think that you, uh, you're not great enough, but believe that you're great, you know, those are things that you used to say to me, you know, and um, there's this one picture that I have of him and me uh, in 2016. Um, he literally waited for me to finish my heat so that we can go back to get ready for the final. And he waited for me in the court, in the, the call room where the media is. And he literally howled me like this and said, ask me, did you make it, did you make it? And I'm like, yeah, 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 I did. He's like, okay, cool, let's go. Let's go get ready for the final. And that's someone that is like, it's you saying, bro, why, why is he waiting for me, you know? And for someone to believe me, believe in me at such a young age, that, I think, also played a factor into who I am as an athlete today and my success as an athlete, you know, and just believing in myself, 
you know so yeah man he's a great guy great mentor great athlete and he's done so much for the sport that it's actually changed the sport for us and it's made it put it in a better position and i mean we don't always hear uh What's that? What's the term they use? Uh, you must never meet your heroes; you'll be disappointed. You know, uh, he's one of those. He comes across, like you're saying, as one of those guys that you meet and you're thinking, "Oh, geez, this is a, a nice surprise." You know? Yeah, yeah. Everybody thinks, you know, they see, you know, they see the show. You know, he's, and it's not even a thing of arrogance. You know, like you saying gives the show, but it's it's cool. Like the energy that is in the stadium when you're racing and he's in the line with you. I always tell people that I've never felt that since he's left. Like, it's different. Like, what Usain brings to the track is crazy. But on the outside of track, when you're just chilling in a hotel, you're chilling, you say, adult, let's play games. Let's play FIFA. Let's play soccer. We talk, you know, football. He's a big United supporter. I'm a big Chelsea supporter. But we talk smack. It's just like boys, dog. You're like, we're just boys, just being gents at the same time. And it's... It's so cool to be able to be like that with someone that is like the face of sport, you know, and being able to be in, that pre in his presence is, man, it's one of my greatest memories and something that I always take with me when I race. I know, I know you're saying loves playing a bit of football. Uh, do you love playing a bit of football? Do you still play any football or are you uh, staying away? I stay away. <laughs> I've always said I'm going to go back when I retire from the sport. I'm going to go play, you know, the Sunday leagues or something like that. Yeah. I will play the Sunday leagues. But right now, I don't do any other sport but track, man. I'm, I think I just need to just focus on this thing and just make sure I don't get hurt or anything because you can get hurt, you know. And, and I don't want to kind of jeopardize my career because I was, you know, kind of being irresponsible doing another sport while I'm being paid to, to focus on my sport. I know clearly you love pain, right? <laughs> you support Kaiser Chiefs, Chelsea, but things are getting better. Huh? huh? Are oh, they? things are getting better. Are you sure? Yeah, no, I mean... Uh, ah, it's a smoke screen, that thing. <laughs> Which bro. one? That thing is Chiefs a lot. Ah, both of them. <laughs> Both of them, bro. Like, <laughs> so you don't have any high hopes for uh, this coming I'm season? I'm just watching. Hey, like, but, I am what kind just, of fan are you? Oh, I'm taking a break. I told you, bro, I'm taking a break. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking a break. Jeeves, Chelsea, I will watch you. And I'll be like, yo, guys, win, win, win. When are you disappointed? I'm like, ah, I was expected. It's fine. <laughs> you know, but the guys, like, Chelsea have been doing well this season, you know. And, like, I'm looking forward to what the team can do. But I don't have any hopes for them. You know, it's just build. Let's see. Chiefs the same thing. Chiefs, hey, it's just their own drama that, hey, it's tough there. It's really <laughs> tough. You, you're going to show us, you know, some light and then just take the light off, switch it off. No ways, bro. Mm -mm. No, my heart's been broken 10 years. Nothing. Look, guys, please give my, give my uh, brother something guys. to smile about. Because, look, I mean, that thing is sad, you can't bro. be going through things like this. And yeah? you know, like, the crazy thing I get, like, the Chiefs shirts every year. Every year I've been getting a Chiefs t-shirt. Do I wear it? Oh, yeah. I wear it and I'm like, ah, I get to lose. These guys lose. I go to the stadium, I watch them. And I'm like, bro, why did I just waste my time coming here watching you guys? Like, this is crazy. Why are you guys not doing anything? That's not the Chiefs that I grew up knowing. You know, and it sucks. Because <laughs> I have friends that are like, Sundown supporters, they've been celebrating, having the best time of their lives, enjoying themselves. And they're on your neck, eh? Bro, they're on my <laughs> neck. I'm even like, I, I, maybe I celebrate, I support you guys sometimes. I'm with you guys sometimes. You know, when you guys win, I support winners, you know. I'm a winner, so I back you guys also. No, this is a faulty fan. This I'm way. not a faulty no, fan. No, 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 no. How do you support enemy sometimes? <laughs> oh, yeah, the enemy is pirates. No. Sundance is not No, the enemy. can we cut the interview? Because now <laughs> you can't be talking about uh, pirates like this here. Pirates is the enemy. We okay. all know that. It's okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, what, what happened this weekend? No, relax. <laughs> no, relax. We fix things. Ah, no, we fix things. <laughs> no, we fix things. <laughs> you know? But I mean, again, this is, uh, this is always the banter that we enjoy, you know, within sports, within football. Um, so for me, you know, it's, 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 it's always good to see you guys having interest outside of, mm. of what you do um, and and no doubt that's a big thing for you as well yeah bro like football is like a big thing for me as much as I like I wanted to play and I didn't play and like I'm still like very involved in it I'm still very interested in it and it's like so cool to be 
like a sportsman, professional sportsman, but then have an interest in other sports. Like, bro, like I would watch football, but I watch every league. Like last night, we were watching Champions League. Bro. Like, and I was switching from channel to channel because I was like, okay, City's playing, you know, and I kind of. Don't tell me you support winners again, there. They winners. If Chelsea doesn't win. City. No, 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 no. I'm telling you. No, I can't. No, 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 no. No. Okay. Maybe we must end this football talk <laughs> because now are you losing me? Yeah. <laughs> telling you, Chelsea not win City. You know, no, you might, no, my cousin United, does this thing. Liverpool, no. Arsenal, no. Hey. No, else? my cousin does this thing. You know when there's penalty shootouts uh. at a World Cup, so she she loves the World Cup. She always gets involved. Whoever's, whoever's scoring a penalty, she's celebrating. And I'm like, but who are you supporting? She's like, no, I, I'm supporting whoever wins. I mean, I'm not like that. I have my team. The other teams can't. Okay. Those top four, top five, never. <laughs> if it's not Chelsea. <laughs> no. But you've been, I mean, you've spoken about some of your interests now. Mm -hmm. um, and traveling being, being something that no doubt you enjoy. Yeah. Um, just to go a bit left, you know. Uh, where's your favorite place in the world that you've been to? The UK. Yeah. London is crazy. It's just cool, have, eh? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. They just have <laughs> bad weather, but UK is crazy. Um, I'm going to Japan next year. It's going to be a second time, but the first time was COVID year, so we didn't really get to see Japan. And like, for me, that's the ultimate place for me to go and explore. Like, and I'm so excited about that, going to Japan, exploring Japan, and just seeing the place for it. You know, So Japan is the place and I'm excited for that. The rest of the world, hey man, South Africa trumps everywhere in the place. Why? Man, it's home, bro. Like, we have good weather. We have great food, great people. Like, we're not living in like apartment blocks, you know. It's, it's every, there's everything in one, you know. It's not expensive here, you know. There's so many good things about South Africa that when I go and I travel, I'm just like, yo, at home, this would have been so much better, you know, that people would have enjoyed it so much. Like, I, I always make sure that, like, you know, like, I keep track of what's happening in South Africa, like, because I miss it. Like, I'm just like, oh, if I was at home, it would be going down now, you know. <laughs> like, and those are the things that you yeah. kind of look to, you know, like, even just having a bri, bro, like, just brying meat. They don't bry meat like us. The, the reason why I ask that is because quite often people always especially people that have not been abroad, that have not traveled. Mm. We can look down on ourselves as, as a country, yeah. Um, but when you do go and experience other places, you're like, yo, you can't replicate what we got. Nah, you know? bro, like, we are like a 10-10 country, you know. We are literally a 10-10 country. Like, South Africa is top tier, bro. We have Joburg, Joburg ultimate. Cape Town, you know, it's too much. But, you know, there's <laughs> Durban, you know, we have good weather. It's a lot. So we have everything. <laughs> like, imagine having everything in one country, you know? And people, like, we tend to look down because of what we see on the socials and everything. And the socials doesn't really give you an actual real picture of what is happening. Every time I go to the West, I'm like, ah, oh, they're lying to us. <laughs> they're lying to us. Never. I tell everyone, guys, this is, this is a scam here. Yeah. It's a scam. It's not what you think it is. Take everyone. It's a scam. Take pictures. Pictures to, to. You see what I'm saying? Nah, we are, bro. We are. We. I feel like it's one of the best countries in the world. I wanna close off by. I'm. I don't, I don't have a crystal ball. Maybe I look into a crystal water. Uh, I'm trying to see the future mm. of Akane Simbini. Tell me. Uh, and maybe, maybe you can share your future. Uh, you know, what's to come, you know, the exciting things that you have in the pipeline. Um, I know you have interests outside uh, of, of track and field. So maybe just let us in on that. Um, so track side, you know, we have the world champs coming up. Everybody keeps asking me if I'm retiring. And I'm just like, nah, dog. I still got another Olympics in me, so 28 will be in LA, that'll be the next Olympics. So we're building up to that, but we have world champs coming up, another world champs in 27 or something like that. Yeah, just trying to get better and faster, you know, and, and, and get that individual medal. I think that's, that's, that's something that I want, you know, and it's, it's something I'm excited about, you know, and I'm just excited about just growing in the sport and motivating the younger kids, you know. The younger is, is a good crop of, younger kids that are coming through and there's so much that I've learned that I can teach to them because 
the game is not a friendly place, bro. The game is not friendly, and it's going to teach you. You know, it's going to teach you, like, really teach you. And then, yeah, man, uh, my business, I have a broadcasting, streaming business, back sports. We shoot for super sport as well, which is doing well, you know, and we, we do well, you know, we, we employ athletes. We employ athletes and we teach them how to do the, the background of sports, you know, the broadcasting, the streaming, learn camera work, all of these things. Those are the things that I'm doing, you know, and um, yeah, then there's this other interest that I have that I'm doing just to make sure that when I leave the sports, I can just fall into something. There's this whole thing about sportsmen that end up being broke, end up not being the same or living the same lifestyle and not being able to you know kind of motivate the younger guys you know because where i grew up when i grew up you see you saw the sportsmen that came through you saw the sportsmen that they were living the lavish lives and everything and then they retired and they fell got into depression they lost themselves and all these things there's so many things that i've seen that i don't want as a sportsman you know so that's why it's like i'm creating a life outside of the sport while i'm still in the sport so that I can just move into it swiftly when I'm done with the game. And you mentioned the youngsters, you know, that crop that you won a medal with in the, in the relay. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, are you, do you see yourself as almost a mentor for, for them and, and that next generation? Because the future is bright. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm an unintentional mo mentor. You know, I'm a pretty, I'm an introvert, man. I'm an introvert and I'm a pretty shy guy, you know, and um, I think it's 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 being a mentor for them is not something where I I plan to be a mentor. It was just something that was brought upon me. It's like, oh, bro, these guys look up to you. These guys want to learn from you, and I share, bro. Like I'm always someone that says, oh, what do you want to know? If you want to know something, ask me. I'm here, you know, and I'm really available for you to actually learn the game, and I will tell you every bit of it. Not not the good things, but the good and the bad. So uh, they, do they call the throat man? Ish. And that's the problem now, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I'm still young, but yeah, I call like Uncle Akad. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing, these guys are calling me uncle and I'm like, ah, guys, relax, Joe. Like, I'm also, I'm also still young, guys, please, leave me, let me be. Yeah. And this thing, hot man, hot man, I'm like, ah, yeah. don't call me hot man, I can't. Uh, ladies and gents, uh, uh, thank you, hot man. Uh, <laughs> sure, hot man. Thank you, boy. Thank you. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.